Hi, I'm Alan and I'm back with more information and tips on how to study, work, and live here in This video is something that immigration consultants charge a lot of money but today you will get this information for free because I want to help those aspiring students that would like to study in Canada. So for the first part of our video, I will be talking about 5 things you need to know before applying for a study permit. Basic stuff like choosing the right DLI, uh, COVID-19 DLI restrictions, application time frame, difference between Canada study visa and student permit and also essential documents and for the second part of our video I will be showing you the step-by-step -step on how to apply for study permit application through online so the first thing you need to know before you apply for study permit is using the right DLI there is nothing wrong or bad about going to a community college paying $10,000 a year for a good quality education versus college or university paying $20,000. You will get this similar decent education for both schools. However, if you choose a college for about $5,000 to $7,000 a year, that is not a designated learning institution, which means your study permit application will be rejected. Please make sure when you're choosing your school, it is a designated learning institution. And make sure if you want to apply for PR, that school has the ability to give you a postgraduate work permit after you finish your studies. Do check if your DLI is applicable. For example, in Manitoba, you will find a list of DLIs that offers PGWP eligible programs. I will share you the link on the description below. The second thing you need to make sure is that the school or the area you chose is prepared to host you or accept you at this time. Most schools have quarantine plans, so most schools are now have the information about COVID-19 or on their website, so it is convenient or you can just directly email them. However, the Canadian government has their own quarantine requirements when it comes to uh, this, you can check their website for more information. For instance, in Manitoba, you will find the list of DLIs that are approved to reopen for international students. And again, you will find this link on the description below. I receive a lot of questions about this. So the third thing that you need to know before you apply for study permit is the time frame of your application. I strongly recommend that you apply at least six months prior coming to Canada or before the start of your program. Why? Because you need a buffer period in case something gets up or something happened on your application. For instance, your application get rejected or refused. You need to make sure you have enough time to add some extra documents and reapply. Another example is that if something happens on your medical test, make sure you have enough time to fulfill it. Some people apply two months prior in their program and they run into some issues, especially right now. The process are longer than the normal. They run into issues of being late for the beginning of a program and that's something you don't want to happen. So the fourth thing you need to know is the difference between study visa and study permit. So the study visa is a document that allows you to enter in Canada, whereas the study permit is a document that allows you to study, live, and work. So at the airport, you will be taken to the immigration and an immigration officer will give you your study permit. There is something to remember that if your program has a call for internship, they must give you a work permit as well. If you don't get it at the airport, you need to ask the officer. Don't be demanding when asking it. Don't dictate your rules. You need to be uh, really polite about it and just ask. The fifth thing that you need to know before applying for study permit is that you need to provide a proper documentation, most especially the statement of purpose or letter of explanation. It is a huge mistake people ignoring the proper documents. 
and it got their application rejected. If you are following my previous video, you probably know the essential documents. If you haven't had a chance to watch my videos, uh, the series of study permit application, do check them out. Uh, you will find the link on the description below or you can click the suggestion button. So before we start or we dive into our step-by-step -step tutorial, uh, make sure password is good for study period plus your postgraduate work permit. For example, your study period is two years and uh, let's say in Canada you get a three years postgraduate work permit after your study. So your passport has to be good for five years and it is important because you don't want to run into issues with your passport when expired. And right now it is pandemic and it's really hard to renew all passports. So for our second part, we will be diving into our step-by-step -step online tutorial. So in your computer or laptop, open your browser, let's say Google Chrome, type in the IRCC Lab Insight. I will share the link on the description below. Make sure to have a DC key username and password. If you don't have it, please create your username and password. So once done, log in and then let's start. So on your account, select apply to come to Canada. On a personal checklist, look for I don't have a personal reference code. And then select visitor visa, study and or work. Okay, then the system will ask you some questions if you are eligible to apply. Answer the questions truthfully. And then click next. My answer here is no because I'm not a resident of United States. Click next. You will select here yes because you already have the DLI learning institution letter. Next, if you live more than six months in other designated countries, answer yes. If not, select no. If you have a front medical, choose yes. Select no if you don't have. If you have GIC, select yes. No if none. Did you pay tuition fee in full? Yes or no? And make sure you have your English test. Provide your marital status and select the province of your destination. Select next and based on the information you provided, you will see the result if you are eligible to apply for a study permit. At this point, another series of questions will be asked. If co-op or internship is essential on your studies, select yes. If it is not required, then you should select no. Finally, review your answers carefully and proceed to the next step. At this point, you may add all the required documents. Follow the instruction guidelines on how to upload all your documents. At the client information, you may upload your SOP, letter of explanation, or other supporting documents that will support your study permit application. As you can see, this portion is for your family member, it could be your spouse or your partner, and or your child. Upload all the required documents here. On the last part of the document checklist, you will find the summary of the payment piece for you and your family. Once you are done with your application, pay the corresponding fees and you are ready to submit. 
Remember, always double check the document that you will attach on your application. And if you need changes, you can return to your account anytime. However, you need to complete and submit your application within 60 days. Otherwise, it will get deleted. And if you have some questions, please comment below and I will try my best on responding on that. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I hope this video helped you and give you a better understanding on the things that you need to know before you apply for a study permit and as well as the step-by-step -step study permit application. Thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.